In an earlier video, we asked the following question. Can a general linear transformation, and not just a matrix, but a general linear transformation, like the derivative on the space of cubic polynomials, be recognized as defective? More generally, can we establish the algebraic multiplicity of an eigenvalue without resorting to characteristic polynomials and other matrix characteristics? Well, we can now answer this question in the affirmative by leveraging the concept of generalized eigenvectors, which we have just discovered. Indeed, everything that we did in this matrix example earlier can be reformulated in the language of general linear transformations. Let me now do so on the board in algebraic terms, and then I'll describe it with words. All right, let's quickly review what we did in the case of a matrix. When we discovered that five was a repeated eigenvalue of this matrix, in other words, it was a eigenvalue of high algebraic multiplicity, we subtracted five from the diagonal. In other words, we consider the matrix A minus five I. And the advantage of saying A minus five I, rather than saying subtract five from the diagonal, is that this algebraic expression can be interpreted in terms of linear transformations. It says, consider a linear transformation that's a difference of your original linear transformation and five times the identity transformation. And then, instead of saying that this column is in the null space of this matrix, we can look for a vector that's in the null space or in the kernel of this linear transformation. And this vector is called an eigenvector. And this number lambda is called the corresponding eigenvalue. And if the story ends right there, we have an eigenvector with an eigenvalue of multiplicity one. But then if we discover that this eigenvector is not only in the null space of this linear transformation, but also in its range, well then we'll have to say that the algebraic multiplicity of this eigenvalue is at least two. And because it's in the range of this transformation, we can find its pre-image. And we will call this pre-image a generalized eigenvector of rank two. And at this point, well actually before finding the second vector, we would already say that the algebraic multiplicity of the second value is two, but the geometric multiplicity is less than two, so it's defective. So we're meeting both goals. We're establishing algebraic multiplicity and recognizing defectiveness. And if this process continue, continues, if we discover that this eigenvector is not only a pre-image of the original eigenvector, but is also in the range of this new transformation, well then we'll say that the algebraic multiplicity of the second value is at least three. And then we'll be able to find a pre-image of this vector under this transformation, and we'll call it a generalized eigenvector of rank three, and so on. And for however many steps this process continues to work, in other words, the current generalized eigenvector is in the range of this transformation, that's the algebraic multiplicity of the eigenvalue lambda. And it can be shown that this analysis is consistent with the more robust analysis that we'll show in the future, where each linear transformation is represented by a matrix, and then the matrix is analyzed in the standard way where you calculate its characteristic polynomial and take it from there. So in this way, algebraic multiplicity and generalized eigenvalues can be extended to general linear transformations. Now let's apply these ideas to the transformation of the derivative on the space of cubic polynomials. Now we know that it has an eigenfunction that's a constant polynomial and the corresponding eigenvalue is zero. All right, and because the corresponding eigenvalue is zero, the linear transformation A minus zero I is still this transformation. So one is the eigenvector, and now the question is, is one 
also in the range of this transformation minus zero i. In other words, just this transformation. And we know that of course it is. And the pre-image of one is x. And so zero is at least a double eigenvalue as far as algebraic multiplicity. But is it more than that? Well, is x in the range of this transformation? And the answer is yes. And a pre-image is one half x squared. So the algebraic multiplicity of this eigenvalue is at least three. And is one half x squared in the range of this transformation? Yes, it is. And a pre-image is one sixth x cubed. And so the algebraic multiplicity of this eigenvalue is at least four. And the process actually stops right there because we're now only considering this transformation on the space of cubic polynomials, so there is nowhere else to go. So this shows that zero is a quadruple eigenvalue as far as algebraic multiplicity, and its defect is three. So as we can see, the concepts of algebraic multiplicity and generalized eigenvalues apply to general linear transformations without ever invoking matrices.